How high are you getting this? As high as Wu-Tang get? <laughs> <laughs> This is good for like seven Ooga Doogas. I'll just spray the camera down with some PB Blaster, you know? Perfect. Yeah. Hope this stuff is real flammable. Get them in that way. That'll be sweet. I mean, that's all you need is a mild fire. <laughs> I said to uh, my girlfriend, I saw the, I saw the, uh, bags of cheese there and I said I like my uh, I like my women like my cheese low-fat American singles only I like my women the way I like my cheese 32 a package <laughs> <laughs> all right so I like my women the way I like my cheese giving me diarrhea <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> all right so I think Out of sheer easiness, we should replace the bucket first. This is like the most out there one. All right, so I'm gonna grab some tools and I'm gonna change my mind and go with the lower arm first. Tools! All right. That should be all the tools I need real quick. That feels like it's a 17. Here's your request, you what the fuck am I doing when I have that power tool? <laughs> we had power tools, but we will not use them. Looks like we will. I can. This one's really on there. Whew. Okay, power tool. Power tools it is. Plug me in, Jesse. This is like real life. Are you tightening it? Oh uh, no. Ooh. Yep, broke it. This is real life. But we have phase two motor trend ones to replace it. Hey! Product dropping like a pro. Um, the real fucking annoying problem is actually gonna be getting that bolt out of there with the sway bar in the way. So now, uh, what we're doing is taking the sway bar out uh, instead of the arms. We'll do both things. <laughs> and to take the sway bar out, you have to take the exhaust out. Evan. Yes. Why your car hate us? Please. <laughs> this is being completely normal. Not like you see on, uh, I don't know, what are car shows nowadays? I don't really know. It's gonna, it's gonna do one of those. Oh, I gotta love that. Sort of. Sure. It's real stuck. You should just leave all this dumb shit in. Oh, I don't know if that's safe. <laughs> it worked though. All right, the sway bar's probably gonna fly off and kill one of us. Yeah. If you're having difficulty with rust, you can always hammer a socket onto the nut. Should 
Never do, ever kids. And that nut is now permanently fused with that socket. It's literally, I don't know if you can see it, but it's literally smoking. It appears to be smoking. Yeah. It's a, uh, that's an old wheel thief's technique where if you have a wheel lock, you just hammer on the nearest size socket and then take it off that way. Da -da 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 -da. By the way, kids. Don't steal wheels. <laughs> don't, steal wheels <laughs> don't 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 take that information and then use it practically. <laughs> you know what, kids, just don't listen to a word I say. That's good. Yeah, not. Uh -huh. Duh. And see, we have to take that sway bar out just to get it out of its way. And these are eccentric bolts, which we wouldn't be able to reuse anyway. So we're breaking, not that big of a deal. And this one should slide out. Break all your shit, kids. Fairly easily, but we do want to reuse this one, so try to be a little gentle. <laughs> You're going to be a little gentle with the biggest hammer. Yep. This is the second biggest hammer. All right. Now, <laughs> what's bigger, Mjolnir? So, what we need to do is get these roughly the same length because we're not aligning it right now. So, pretty sure this has this turnbuckle that uh, works, I think. It seems to be working. Uh, the other one won't, that's a guarantee. But this one? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's a permanent resident of uh, Fuckville there. Remember when we said we were gonna make this show family friendly? Oh yeah, uh, Fudgeville. Permanent resident of Fudgeville. Um, the swearing comes so much more naturally to us. That is true. So I'm opening up the uh, bag of the new bolts and uh, what's it called? And the eccentric lockouts here. Because I need one of these bolts to help line it up. What happens if the kids at home don't use eccentric lockouts? Um, well, if you put a regular bolt through as you're tightening it, you are going to, uh, oh, that's, that's pretty close. Um, but yeah, what'll end up happening is uh, that it's eccentric motion in the factory bolt will, uh, as you're tightening it, it will move it around and change your alignment. But that's not gonna happen here. Get back under here. Oh God. Ooh, fit, should fit good. If it good. Yeah, a lot of the time with these things, one side will be pinched in or something like that, and it'll it's our, it ends up being a real bastard. Cue Madonna's Like a Virgin. Like a Virgin. I don't actually know how the song goes, I'm too young. I have no, no, I've no, I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> except for those ones. Oh no, it's, it's like, touch for the very first time. Yeah, that's right. But that's, that's what I know. She won a Grammy for that song. No. I think. You tell me lies. I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, the whole idea we'll here. We'll Google it later. As you can, you can see if I could get it in there. It fits uh, in this. I can't really see what I'm doing here, but uh, it fits in this area to hold this in place. Is that fitting appropriately or not? Um, I don't know. I'm looking at it backwards. I can't tell. I feel like no. Um, so uh, we'll get, we'll try to put the. Uh, I put it through. Oh, oh man. Just the best boy out here. Let's see if we can get this in. So that's, oops, so that's gonna be tougher. This is why you don't want to tighten it down. It's gonna have to twist and bend to get in there. Hama. Oh, mallet, I think. Hama. Which apparently is Japanese for hammer. I went to Japan. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, a little further. Right, Perfect. That's in a rough alignment. And I'm gonna put the nut on over here. And, ah, oh, perfect. All right, now let's get the, uh, uh, I guess it's called a spring bucket on this thing. Basically what it is, is the factory system 
used the spring here and then the shock on the outside, but this has field coilovers on it that uh, change it to a true coilover setup. So it's no spring more, on coil. Yeah, so no no more uh, spring over here. So this is just a um, pointless empty gabe hole, empty bucket right here. Uh, and as you can probably see, there's no adjustability there. to it at all. Oh, you can just look at it. It's empty. Yeah. Anyway. So this, uh, there's no adjustability to this arm. So uh, we want adjustability out of it. So we're going to change it. Oh, there it is. It should come off. Oh. All right, there it goes. All right, so now we've got to get the inside one, which is right above the exhaust pipe, which as usual is just so, so simple and amazing. Good, I only have one degree of movement. Can you actually get a, you got it. He got it, he used all his man strength. A man! That's what I didn't want to happen. That might have to get hammered through. Oh uh, yeah, 100%. Oh, wait, or just take the tension off it. Like a smart guy. Hey look, an eccentric bolt. Hey, we didn't break it. No. An eccentric bolt we didn't break. Is it even possible? It broke nothing. This is a stupid spring bucket. A spring sits in it. Yes. You should use coil on chalk instead. Shall be replaced with this little number. A, uh, a, a far different uh, setup. <laughs> this is a spring bucket. That's a rod. <laughs> All right, I think on this one we're going to be better off doing the inside first, just because uh, of the exhaust position. It's got to go back. Let's get the wide open. Oh, and it's through. Can't tighten it by hand because nylock is a thing. <laughs> I don't have Hulk fingers. Hulk fingers? Does that require any kind of washer? No, just a, this is just replacement of the factory bolt. This is why it's not a 19. In the record books, it's not a 19 and it doesn't look like you can fit a socket in there. So, that's, uh, that's our sentence right there. You see this? You see this setup? That's a leverage multiplier. Oh, functional AF. I'm gonna multiply that leverage. That's actually, I'm not gonna say loose, but you know what I mean. And now before I take that off fully, I'm gonna see what the deal is underneath here with the one that connects to the knuckle. Because I don't want it to fall on my face. Got here, you are a 17. All right, and your little friend is impossible to get to. <laughs> oh, it's right. Struggle City, population you. Yeah. What if it's a rusty 17? It's, it's that, <laughs> no matter what, but it, might, it feels 18-ish. So, so it's an 18 now, it used to be a 17. Yeah. But oxidation. The art is formerly known as 17. <laughs> to do also. Leverage multiplier. Yeah, if I can, oh, piece of shit. Am I going to the right direction? Probably not. It didn't break it loose. It just stripped it. It just hurt the, the bolt or nut. It hurt your nuts. The right side, the 17 kind of fits now. I have to do it from the bolt side, which I hate doing. That's pretty bad. Yeah, let me go up here. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'd like to give a shout out to Peanut Butter Blaster. Yes. 
Okay, so that's out. Uh, turns out you're supposed to take the camber arm off first. Well, leave the camber arm off the knuckle. It's the only way we could get it off at least. Maybe there's some magical trick. Well, we don't know it. Piecing that back on. Galen is destroying a race car in the background. Let's go. <laughs> Mostly himself. Put this onto there. Which is impossible. Take the arm off. No. Titan to DeWalt, two Daka Dakas. Stats Nation! All right, well, I definitely haven't taken out as many rear ends as Ryan Turk, but um, I've taken this one out before. Here in the 350Z, it's a little bit of a mess, especially with the setup that I have here. To actually pull this thing out, you know, this pipe work is in the way, the sway bar is in the way, and then there's the normal system of drive shafts and axles that you have to take out. Um, but I'm going to start by removing the exhaust pipes, and I'm not gonna fully remove the sway bar, but I will, you know, disconnect it from the chassis and let it hang. That'll help a lot. see the sway bar here is now in the way of this coming down when the time comes now of course you can try to maneuver this around it and whatever but I mean honestly it, it's just so much easier to remove it <laughs> Next, to drain the diff fluid. This is not a necessary step, but in our case, it needs to be changed. Except it's actual mounting bolts and this. This is 
the uh, connector that goes to your tone rings here for, I believe, ABS, but don't quote me on that. Okay, the button broke. Perfect. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. So I'm also gonna flop it over the set frame. All right, the drive shaft is exactly like the uh, axles. Take it, put some wrenches on there. And uh, crack the old girl loose. push this thing forward and it will usually move pretty easily and then uh, just drop it down just to move on the exhaust. There we go. And down. All right, trans jack is supporting its weight but it's not insanely connected. Um, it's just really you know, supporting it. But it could easily fall out, <laughs> if that makes anyone feel any better. See if I can get this in there. Oh, nope. Hand tools like a peasant. Lightning strikes by my hand. And now, I'm gonna lower it. But it's in a very awkward position. All right, I just pulled the diff out of the 350Z and uh, now I'm going to yank the cover off, pull the axle shafts out and uh, weld this thing. So hopefully it'll do good skids. Now when you're doing this, you don't want to hit the ABS sensor, you don't want to hit this, that's the uh, vent tube, you don't want to hit the studs, you don't want to hit none of that. Just want to very gently whack on the uh, broad edges. It'll, it'll disconnect pretty quickly. See, there you go. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Alright, now I'm going to start spraying some non-chlorinated brake cleaner in here to uh, clear some of the oil out. Uh, there's going to be a lot of cleaning that happens in here. And you uh, want to use the non-chlorinated, if you're going to use brake cleaner at all on something you're going to weld, you want to use non-chlorinated brake cleaner because uh, if you use chlorinated brake cleaner, it will uh, create, I think it's chlorine gas, which is poisonous. So uh, don't do that. So I just learned something uh, bad when I just started uh, Spraying this thing out. This is not an open differential. It's just a really, really worn out locking differential. Uh, so I'm gonna have to find myself an open differential really quick uh, and weld that one. All right. Okay, so I was lucky enough to uh, get this 350Z diff. This is actually an open 350Z diff instead of this <laughs> clapped out locker. Uh, that I genuinely thought was an open because it was so destroyed. But uh, this is a genuine open and I'll be able to weld it. Use a rubber mallet to knock out the axle stubs. Remove the bearing caps. Now pry out the differential. Well, after I have the uh, diff apart, I like to organize things like this to just keep track of where everything came from. Unbolt the ring gear. Use a soft hammer to remove it if need be. I put the bolts back in so I don't lose them. Now I dump a couple cans of brake cleaner in the differential.
Measure up the space between the spider gears so I know what size plate to cut. I mark a piece of 3 16 steel and cut it with an angle grinder. I give it a little shape to fit between the gears better. Zip tie a pair of old welding gloves over the bearings to protect them. Put a couple tacks on the plate to keep it from moving around. Now go to town welding it. Do this for both sides. After it cools down, reinstall the ring gear. Place the differential back in the housing. Give it a few taps if you need to. Reinstall the bearing caps. Reinstall the axle stubs. Check for easy movement and rotation. It's important to spend a good amount of time cleaning the mating surface for the silicone. You don't want your rear diff to leak. Remember to thoroughly clean the diff cover as well. Apply RTV, meant for use with oil. Use a finger to flatten it out. Place the cover on the differential and finger tighten the bolts. I like to give it about 10 minutes for the RTV to skin up before I fully tighten it. Next, assault the diff bushing with a selection of power tools and hand tools like you're an Italian mobster and it owes you money. With everything reinstalled, you're ready to do a drift without worrying about the back of your car falling out. Alright, it's time for a little lubrication, ladies.